Last class, we talked about polar coordinates. As we talked about, you have to think differently when you're thinking in terms of polar coordinates than in rectangular coordinates. This applies to integration as well. Let's take a look at an illustration. When we do integration to find the area under a curve in rectangular coordinates, we think of integrating in the direction of the x-axis as we sweep across from left to right, filling in the area. We integrate from A to B. When we integrate in polar coordinates and think about it, we have to consider that our independent variable is theta rather than x. So we don't sweep across in the x direction, we sweep around in theta. So we fill in the area in this radial manner. You have to, again, think in polar coordinates. As theta increases, how does that sweep out the area? With rectangular coordinates, we approximate the area under a curve using rectangles. So if we have the same area and we want to approximate with one rectangle, this is what it would look like using a right-hand endpoint two rectangles, three, four, five, and so on. And as we increase the number of rectangles, we're all familiar with the idea that it will get closer and closer to the actual area under the curve. But let's say we want to do the same thing in polar coordinates. With polar coordinates, we're not going to use rectangles to do the approximation. We're going to use the sectors of a circle. So if I jump ahead a little bit in the animation here, what you see are individual wedges, sectors of a circle. Each sector has a radius from the origin determined by the point on the curve, the R value for the polar curve. This, these sectors are the equivalent of right-hand rectangles in that each point that defines the sector is a little bit further along in theta. The angle of the sectors is delta theta, a little bit of angle as we go around. So as the number of sectors increases, just like with rectangular coordinates, we begin to fill in the area more and more accurately. At the very beginning of the animation, if we have a single approximation, it actually uses this point to define an entire circle. With two sectors, it looks a little strange with the two kind of semicircles, and then three sectors, four sectors, five, and so forth. So that's why I started a little further out. In your notes, there's an illustration of each of these cases. With rectangular coordinates, when we estimate the area under a curve and do so with rectangles, the area of each rectangle is simply the base times the height of the rectangle. So that's the f of x times delta x, which is added up for all of the different rectangles. And then, of course, we take the limit as n goes to infinity or delta x goes to 0. This gives us our integral from a to b of f of x dx for area. But now with polar coordinates, we need to determine how to find the area of an individual sector. This is not as simple as the area of a rectangle. A sector is a part of a circle, and we can find the area of a sector using a proportion. The area of a sector is to the area of the entire circle, pi r squared, as the angle theta is to 2 pi, the angle for the entire circle. So if we bring pi r squared up to the other side, the pi's cancel out, and we're left with that the area of a sector is 1 half theta times r squared. Bringing this into the formula, if we want each individual sector, the radius r is determined by f of theta. r equals f of theta is our polar curve. So we have 1 half f of theta squared, which is the r squared, times the angle. Each individual sector has an angle of delta theta. So when we add these all together, 
and take the limit as the number of sectors goes to infinity, this gives us our integral for area, one half the integral from alpha to beta, where alpha is the starting angle and beta is the ending angle, of f of theta squared d theta. So this is a little different than what we're used to with rectangular coordinates. So as long as we have a continuous function and the function does not take on both positive and negative values on the interval between alpha and beta. So that means that the polar curve just kind of has to stay all positive r or all negative r for this to work. Then the area of the region bounded by the graph r equals f of theta between the radial lines theta equals alpha and theta equals beta is area equals one half the integral from alpha to beta of f of theta squared d theta. And sometimes you may see this formula as one half the integral from alpha to beta of r squared d theta. But remember, r equals f of theta. <laughs>